Hello friends, welcome to this video tutorial which will focus on how to set up a PCR reaction. In this problem based learning series, we will learn some calculations today and we will try out some practice questions. But before we start, as usual, let's go through the answers of the problem I gave you in my last tutorial video. This gene of interest, yummy cake, has eco R1 and XBA1 restriction sites present in its coding region or open reading frame ORF. Hence, we cannot use these two enzymes for the cloning process. Next, in the PUC vector MCS, we find BAMH1 restriction site is present in both the GOI and the vector and is located outside of the coding region. We also have to keep in mind that the start codon in this GOI should be aligned with M13 PUC sequencing primer binding location. Next, we can see that SAL1 is present in both as well and seems to be suitable with respect to orientation of the primer site. Why we cannot use Hindi 3 which is also present in GOI and vector and seems to be suitable? We are doing directional cloning so that the start codon is towards the forward primer. If we choose Hindi 3 as one of the enzymes which is just before the start codon, we have to choose SAL1 as second enzyme since XBA1 cannot be used. In PUCMCS, SAL1 comes before Hindi 3. Hence, the most suitable pair of enzymes will be BAMH1 and SAL1 for this cloning. Now let's learn about polymerase chain reaction or PCR and its types and also how a typical routine PCR reaction is assembled. PCR is one of the most well-known technique of molecular biology based on biochemical process of replication. One fragment of DNA can be amplified into millions of fragments in short time. This technique was given by Carrie Mullis in 1983 for which he won Nobel Prize in the year 1993 and has widespread applications in the fields of disease diagnostics, forensic investigations, research and agricultural testings. I will be teaching about the PCR applications with examples in my next tutorial. A PCR reaction will have three basic steps of denaturation annealing of primers and extension of primers to make new DNA strands. Denaturation is critical to create a single standard template so that complementary primers can anneal to the template and can be extended by DNA polymerase to make a new DNA strand. This new DNA strand can be used as template to create more new DNA strands and so on in multiple cycles of denaturation annealing and extension. This PCR amplifies a strand of DNA exponentially. The number of new strands doubles during each cycle and can be calculated by 2 raised to the power n where n is the number of cycles. Here we are assuming that the starting DNA template was only one molecule and that the PCR reaction works with 100% efficiency. To assemble a PCR reaction, what reagents or components are required? First of all, the DNA template, which is the desired DNA segment or maybe a gene of interest we wish to amplify. Next, the forward and reverse primers to amplify the template. The primers are short synthetic sequences of DNA, which are complementary to the coding and template sequences of the DNA template. We are amplifying they anneal to the corresponding single-stranded DNA sequence of the template after the denaturation step and provide three primo edge group for the DNA polymerase to extend it into a new DNA strand. Primers can be designed using several available softwares like Primer3. Next component is the DNA polymerase enzyme which will add new DNTPs which are complementary to the template strand to extend the primers. Since PCR is an automated process and denaturation step requires high temperature of around 95 degrees centigrade, we cannot use any DNA polymerase enzyme since they will not be stable at such high temperatures. 
The most popular DNA polymerase enzyme used for PCR is TAC polymerase, which is acquired from a bacteria called Thermus aquaticus, which is found in hot water springs. However, TAC polymerase does not have proofreading activity and can lead to errors in sequencing, etc. Hence, we now use either other thermostable DNA polymerases or a mix of them. We also need a buffer which is optimized for DNA polymerase activity. It usually contains a magnesium salt like magnesium chloride to provide magnesium ions as cofactor at a concentration of around 0.5 to 5 millimolar. Next we add a mixture of four DNTPs which help in creating new DNA strands by providing the building material. We use sterile water to make up the volume and to dilute the buffer. Now let's calculate the concentration for each component we have to add in a PCR reaction. For a typical PCR reaction, we prefer a volume of 50 microliters. We begin calculating buffer volume first, which is usually supplied as a 10x or 10 times concentrate. Hence, for a 50 microliter reaction, 5 microliter 10x buffer will give us 50 microliter of 1x buffer in final concentration. For DNTP is usually supplied as 10 millimolar stock for each DNTP including DATP, DCTP, DGTP and DTTP. We require a final concentration of 200 micromolar for all combined. This means 50 micromolar concentration of each DNTP should be present in the D PCR reaction. Next for forward and reverse primers, 0.1 to 0.5 micromolar final concentration is suitable as too much primer can lead to mispriming and too less primer will not let the PCR reaction to complete. It will be insufficient. DNA template concentration can be anywhere between 1 nanogram to 100 nanogram per reaction. DNA polymerase is supplied as international units or IU per ml or per microliter. Its concentration may differ from one supplier to another. Usually 0.5 to 2.5 international units can be added per 50 microliter reaction or as directed by the manufacturer. Then add water to make up the final volume to 50 microliter. Usually magnesium ions are present in buffer but may be added additionally if required to give a 4 millimolar final concentration. We use the formula C1V1 equals to C2V2 to perform calculations where C1 is the concentration of the stock solution provided whereas C2 is the final concentration required. V2 will be the volume of the reaction say 50 microliter which is required whereas V1 will be the volume of stock required to be added. Let's take the example of how to set up PCR reaction from the given concentration. Here we have to set up 6 PCR reactions of 50 microliter each. So whatever we calculate, we can multiply them by 6 to get volumes required for 6 reactions. For the template, stock concentration given is 50 microgram per ml and required concentration is 100 nano, uh, nanogram per reaction. We will not use the C1V1 equals to C2V2 formula here, but use a simple maths that if 50 microgram or 50,000 nanograms are present in 1 ml or 1,000 microliter, then 100 nanograms will be present in 2 microliters of the template stock. Next, we calculate for the forward and reverse primers using C1V1 equals to C2V2, where V1 values are 1 microliter for each primer. Next, for DNTPs, again using the formula V1 is 1 microliter for each DNTP. Since each DNTP stock is 2.5 millimolar concentration. For TAC polymerase, 50 international units are present in 1 ml or 1000 microliter. Hence, 0.2 international units will be present in 4 microliters of the enzyme solution. 10x buffer will be added at 5 microliter and will be diluted 10 times. Water will be 35 microliter to make up the final volume to 50 microliter. While assembling the PCR reaction, we add the water first, then buffer and other reagents. DNA polymerase enzyme is added in the end just before starting the reaction. 
The reaction takes place in a thin walled PCR tube which is inserted in the slots of a thermal cycler. A thermal cycler is a heat block with programmed temperature settings. This leads to automation of the whole process and makes PCR a very fast and efficient technique. There are several modifications made to PCR for different purposes and making it more efficient. Let's have a look at the types of PCR. Besides the routine PCR which we just learned, RT-PCR or reverse transcription PCR uses RNA as a start material which is then converted to complementary or cDNA by a reverse transcription step using reverse transcriptase enzyme. This PCR is more suitable for studying gene expression. However, RT-PCR is qualitative or semi-quantitative in nature and can be made quantitative by using a fluorescent dye or probe-based quantification method. This is now called QRT-PCR. Then GC-rich PCR uses TAC polymerase and another proofreading polymerase for those templates which are rich in G and C bases and therefore difficult to PCR due to strong hydrogen bonds. Hot start PCR prevents any non-specific DNA amplification and primer dimer formation which might take place at lower temperature or room temperature. It's a slightly modified form of routine or conventional PCR in which binding of TAC polymerase is inhibited at lower temperature or TAC polymerase is added later after the denaturation step to increase the specific product yield. High fidelity PCR uses a DNA polymerase with higher proofreading activity and low error rate, therefore higher accuracy. Long range PCR can help us amplify the large template up to 20 to 30 KB, uh, like in genomic DNA templates. This PCR uses optimized DNA polymerase enzyme. Hopefully you understood the PCR reaction assembly calculations. Based on your understanding, solve these three problems given here. Read them carefully and answer. All the best. Give your answers in the comment section or check my next video for the answers and explanations. Your comments and suggestions are most welcome. If you liked this tutorial and learned something new and useful, please like and subscribe to my channel and keep me going. In this series, my next tutorial will be on PCR applications in the field of medicine, forensics and agriculture. Till then, bye bye and thank you.